The story of Hungarian oil during the Second World War begins with the absolute tragic consequences of the Treaty of Trianon in 1920 that annexed over two-thirds of Hungary's lands and most of its mountainous areas which were rich in natural resources. Economic depression and hardships forced the remnants of Hungary to fall back on its low remaining quantities of coal while the country became an importer of petroleum. Throughout the late 1930s and early 1940s, the story of Hungarian oil would see a bittersweet comeback. These were the many sources used for the creation of this video, and anyone who would like to learn more about Hungarian oil is highly encouraged to check them out and look at the video description to get the full titles. The petroleum demands of Hungary in 1920 amounted to only 2% of the total energy demand of the country. However, the percentage for petroleum demand would rise with the increase of motor vehicles steadily to 3.72% in 1928 and up to 4.62% by 1939. Because there was little to no domestic oil production, the main way Hungary could obtain this energy source was through import opportunities which were in the control of other nations. Petroleum imports rose drastically from 70,000 metric tons in 1920 to 136,229 tons in 1929 and up to 238,276 tons in 1936. That being said, the lack of domestic production and the limited import possibilities meant that domestic refineries were frequently shut down as there was little to refine. This meant that the financial costs associated with this energy source were great and the country could not afford to develop its own solution to the energy problem. The lignite hydrocracking process developed by Hungarians which was implemented at Pétfürde was promising. This process could turn brown coal into various petroleum fractions, such as diesel. However, domestic mineral oil sources were needed to rectify the situation. The energy turnaround would occur in the late 1930s, allowing for partial rebound in the country's fuel and POL drought. The rebound was headed by Hungarian geologist Shimon Pop. Mr. Pop was employed by the Anglo-Persian Oil Company, rising through its ranks to become its chief geologist and had the opportunity to work in various countries such as Albania, Australia, New Guinea, Turkey, and Yugoslavia. He would be employed by other oil companies as well and worked in both Germany and Canada before returning to Hungary in 1932 and later becoming affiliated with the Anglo-American Eurogasco, European Gas and Electric Company, in 1933. In that same year, Hungary, along with Eurogas Co., which was headed by Standard Oil of New Jersey, who had a 90% stake in the organization, signed a contract for hydrocarbon exploration in the Transdanubian area in June. And for this promising project, Shimon Pop was chosen as the chief geologist for Hungary. Costs for this project were borne by Eurogas Co. and the soon-to-be-formed Moart. More on this later while the Hungarian state would receive 15% of the oil yields, 12% of the natural concentrate, and 15% of the gas concentrate. Eurogasco utilized the most modern tools and techniques at the time, including rotary drilling with mud and electric logging for its exploration, though initially it only produced poor results. A petroleum field was found in Buxik in April 1937, However, this was small and served more as a successful demonstration of hydrocarbons within the current Hungarian border more than anything else. The Buxig oil field initially only produced between 80 and 100 barrels of oil per day. The first major hydrocarbon site was discovered later that same year in Budafapusta, and under the direction of Shimon Pop, the site began commercial production on the 21st of November, 1937. This date marks the birth of Hungarian commercial oil production. Following the production of oil from Budafapusta, Eurogasco was replaced by the joint stock company Moart, Hungarian American Oil Corporation, and took over operations in Hungary. Moart was founded on July 15, 1938, and officially registered three days later on the 18th. Moart was therefore a subsidiary of the American Standard Oil Company of New Jersey, 
and for the year of 1938, Hungary was able to produce 43,000 tons of oil. By now, 100% of the capital for the funding of Moart came from the Americans, and this period beginning mid-June of 1938 showed almost undisturbed development from the formation date until 20th of December 1940. By 1939, Moart was able to supply 80% of the country's demand, and Hungary produced 144,000 tons of oil and imported 178,208.5 tons. While the following year, in 1940, the country was able to supply 100% of its domestic demand. In 1940, Moore discovered another oil field at Lovasi and was able to satisfy not only the entire country's petroleum demands, but also all the country's newly acquired territories from the lands annexed by the Treaty of Trianon and, more impressively, Hungary now turned into an export nation, with one-third of domestic production being sold off as exports to other countries such as Italy and Germany. The use of water injection during extraction, which was one of the first of its kind such operations in Europe, allowed for this amazing feat. In 1940, Hungary was producing 252,917 tons and importing only 38,418.2 tons. In 1941, two more oil fields were discovered at Lendva Uifolu and Pustasen Laszlo. Business was booming and production rates were on the rise. The four oil fields consisting of Budafa Pusta, Lovasi, Lendva Uifolu and Pustasen Laszlo were calculated to hold around 100 million barrels of oil. For 1941, Hungary was able to produce 422,167 tons and export 93,014 tons. In addition, Europe's longest oil pipeline at the time was built between Bazakeretje and Budapest, stretching roughly 250 kilometers to transport the oil. Later that same year, on the 26th of August, a German company also applied for its own share in the success and was named Monant, Hungarian German Oil Works Limited. This company focused on exploiting oil reserves found in the Pannonian Basin in southern Hungary. Another player in the Hungarian oil bonanza came in the form of Molat, Hungarian Italian Oil Industry Incorporated, which focused its operation in northern Transylvania and made numerous discoveries throughout 1940 through 1944. The year 1941 and Hungary's unavoidable involvement in the Yugoslavian campaign after the suicide of Prime Minister Teleki Pal meant that ever higher rates of production and exports were demanded from the nation's oil fields. With Hungary declaring war on the United States on the 13th of December 1941, Moart found itself in a very precarious position for the following seven days, and on the 20th of December 1941, the oil company financed and run by American Standard Oil Company of New Jersey fell into Hungarian state hands. This marked the beginning of the nation's oil production's second period of activity. Production was increased again in 1942 to 667,952 tons for the year, with only 8,759.5 tons imported and a whopping 325,281.9 tons being exported. The remaining American managers and workers, along with Shimon Pop, tried their best to ensure the survival of the company's assets and future production capabilities. However, they could not stop the ever-increasing exploitation of oil reserves from the oil fields. Thirteen oil refineries were operational by 1943, with six in the east and six in the west. The ones in the west were Sogn, Almash Fuzite, Petfurde, Chapel and two in Budapest, while in the east there was Sureg, Munkac, Legenye Mihai, Chop, Desh, Morosvásárhely, and Nyir Bogdan. Production numbers peaked once again up to 841,002 tons, with only 5,912 tons imported and a new record of 458,753 tons exported. Petroleum exports would rise well up to over 50% by 1944 without hurting domestic demand, and as such, this taxing of the natural exploitation of the oil fields became noticeable. 
Budafa Pusta, as an example, already exceeded its peak production rate in 1944, resulting in a natural drop of production. Total Hungarian production for the year was lower at 810,160.63 tons, while 4,554.7 tons were imported and 481,251.7 tons exported. That being said, the quantity of oil being produced within Hungary meant that special attention would be paid to its production capabilities by many nations. Both Americans and the British took incentives to bomb refineries and production facilities throughout the final two years of the war. Particularly heavy attacks were carried out in the summer of 1944, and the Americans no doubt had the unique and unfortunate advantage of knowing precisely where to target the bombings, as Moart was, after all, only the head of their nation's company, despite the hostile takeover since 1940. Not only were the production facilities and oil installations attacked, but also the shipping routes which could guarantee the delivery of the precious fuel. The British RAF flew daring low-level raids over the Danube to mine the shipping lanes oil barges would travel along. In retaliation, the Luftwaffe would fly Junkers 52 planes fitted with degaussing rings, which were used as minesweepers to clear the river routes. In 1944, Hitler himself became more and more sensitive to the Axis POL situation and voiced his opinions on Hungarian oil production with surprising defensiveness. Securing the Hungarian area is of essential importance to us. So important that we can't overestimate it at all. The war would be lost should the Russians overrun the Hungarian plans. At the turn of the final year, Oil was of primary importance for the Axis war effort, meaning that every effort to retain production centers and oil reserves would be made. Armored training units were now relying partially on wood gasifiers comprised of large boiler tanks attached to vehicles for powered operation, and roughly 2 to 2.5 kilograms of wood equated to 1 liter of petrol. Horse-drawn equipment was very common and mobile units originally intended to be transported by vehicles were now marching more frequently. In January 1945, after the Soviets had launched their Vistula Order offensive, German high command discussed further courses of action to hold the Eastern Front. Hitler wanted the armored capabilities highlighted for this job to move to the Lake Balaton area in Hungary to protect the oil fields southwest of the lake. Heinz Guderian was of the opinion that much of the remaining armored capabilities Germany still had should be moved into position to go on the offensive around Berlin. Heated arguments erupted over how to allocate the limited forces most effectively. Hitler rebuttaled Guderian, stating that, You want to attack without oil? Good, we'll see what happens when you do that. Hitler accepted the risk of the Russian threat to the Oder east of Berlin. The armored forces would eventually be moved to the Bolathon area, where the final large offensive conducted by the Third Reich would play out. Hitler also placed high importance on the 70,000 tons of oil available in reserve at Neutkonija in early 1945. On the 23rd of January, at a situation conference discussing the Eastern Front, the three most important strategic points were laid out, with the first being the Hungarian and Austrian oil-producing regions, which made up at that time 80% of reserves, and without which the war effort would be lost. With the Soviet 2nd and 3rd Ukrainian fronts taking Budapest and crossing the Danube, the Hungarian oil production capabilities were greatly reduced. Astoundingly, however, the Petfürdu plant shipped 1,018 tons of oil to the Germans between the 20th of February and the 16th of March. This time window was no doubt utilized for the conducting of operations Southwind and Spring Awakening. During this time as well, the German geologist Alfred Benz was asked by Albert Speer on the 5th of March 1945 that more drilling and production of Hungarian oil should be undertaken. Benz responded that from a geological point of view, as was in line with previous geological assessments of Hungarian oil fields, that additional exploitation would harm the natural production capabilities of the oil fields. And that besides this, the transportation of oil equipment to Hungary could not be performed at this point in time. In the final months of the war in Hungary, that is March and April, the Germans and the Hungarian fascist Aerocross exported much of the vital equipment still left in operational use in the country. 
In addition to the forced overproduction which caused a natural reduction in the exploitation possibilities of the oil fields and the bombing destructions the Hungarian oil facilities suffered, this looting effectively further neutered the capabilities of Moart. However, the plants did have a single saving grace, as they were kept in operation until the final hour by Axis forces. Once the Soviets captured these areas, they were able to swiftly reactivate many locations to production-ready status. Petfurde, as an example, was reopened on the 30th of March after the Soviets took over, and between April and June, this location refined 37,053 tons of oil. The Shell refinery in Chepel was also restarted, and by the end of April, it was selling its product. The Lovasi oil field reopened on the 10th of April 1945, shortly after the Soviets had taken control of the area. Thank you for checking out this video. For more World War II history content pertaining to Hungary, please check out my channel and consider subscribing. Bye for now and I'll catch you in the next one.